Aperture just announced and released the new MC RGB LED light. So in this video, we're going to be taking a close look at it. I've been using it for a while and I'm very excited to talk about it because it has some really cool features that really no other light have. At the same time, it does have some disadvantages that you should know about before picking one up. So before we jump any further into the review of this light, I do want to disclose that Aperture sent two of these units to us for review. They didn't send along any scripts. They have no idea what we're going to be saying. So thank you, Aperture, for uh, sending us a couple of these little suckers. In short, this is an RGB WW light. So it has full color capabilities, a range of 3200 to 6500 Kelvin when it comes to kind of the CCT mode on this light. We'll get to the modes here in a second. And it has a blue Bluetooth mesh network chip built in, which will work with an app on your phone that rivals any other lighting app I've worked with to date. And we'll look at all of that here in a little bit. But first I wanna cover what comes in the box if you pick one of these up. You'll obviously get the light itself, a really cute little bag that'll hold everything together, kind of silicone milk diffuser, which works phenomenally well, and I really love this thing on the light. And finally, you'll get a couple sticky Velcro attachments and a USB-C cable for charging. At launch, the MC is available as a single unit for $90. Kits will be available in the future, and they'll come along with a wireless charging case, which is kind of exciting. Looking at the side of the light, you'll notice there's the input for charging via USB-C, the power on off switch, and a little rotating dial that also has a button for controlling the light. And there's also magnets on the back allowing you to mount the MC to anything that is metal. And I'm really amazed at how strong these magnets are. So well done, Aperture. Those are no joke magnets. Another awesome feature about the rear of this light is that it does support wireless charging. So you can actually use any QI charger and get this puppy charged up without any cables. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire up this light and we'll talk about the different modes. So. On the top of the light, you'll notice there's a little tiny OLED screen allowing us to control and see what's going on. On the far right side, we have our battery life indicator as well as the Bluetooth icon if that's in use, and then a bunch of other information that'll change depending on what mode you're in. So this light has four different modes. If you press and hold the little wheel on the side, you'll be able to change these modes. And the first one here I have is the CCT. This is essentially your bicolor mode. So changing from warm to cool, very simple. And of course you can change the brightness as well. Next up we have HSI, which stands for hue, saturation, and intensity. This is where things get crazy with color. If you go into this mode, you'll be greeted by the hue menu where you can rotate and change the hue of the light using that wheel. If you short press, you'll move over to saturation, so you can control the saturation, which is awesome. And then you press once more to change your intensity. So hue, saturation, and intensity all in this HSI mode. The next mode on this light is the FX mode, and you're able to go in here and change to things like party, which I have here. And there's a whole host of these that allow you to, without any applications or software, control different effects on the light. When in effects mode, you can use the dial to change the different effects. If you press in on the dial, you'll be able to select the intensity of each of them. And it's a little limiting, but if you want full control, you can jump into the app. We'll get to that in a bit. And finally, there is the BT or Bluetooth reset. So I can go in here and reset the actual Bluetooth and we can control this light with an app on our iOS device. There is an app coming out for Android before too long. When it comes to output and color quality, this light does pretty good considering the size. I actually have an M9, which is very similar in this light behind me. Let me grab it real quick. By the way, that's a really fun little trick is sticking these lights in existing fixtures to kind of fake light and I love this thing for that. So here I have an Aperture M9 and I've been using these forever. I absolutely love them. Here's the MC. Side by side you can see very similar in size. The MC is just a little chunkier uh, than the M9. When I compared the output differences between these, I found them to be almost identical with the M9 being just a touch brighter at certain color temperatures. So while you're not gonna gain a ton of output with this, you will gain you know, it being a bicolor light and having RGB capabilities. Another light I compared with the MC is the Bowling P1. It's a very popular light. I'm actually gonna grab it. I'm using it to kind of add this red glow behind my iMac. 
I'll go ahead and turn it off so we don't blind ourselves. But this light has been very popular. I've been using it a ton. You've seen them in my videos. Uh, it's really, really, really good light. So it's similar to the MC in that it is a bicolor RGB light with built-in effects, built-in battery, similar. Uh, and it also has this amazing mount that I absolutely adore on it. Uh, but it is bigger than the MC. And it's really not that much more considering the output since it's bigger, it is definitely brighter. So when it comes to this style light, you will get more output and similar features. But what you're going to miss that you have on the MC is the Citus Link app and the way this communicates with other lights. So now I want to jump into a couple different setups where I use the MCs and show you why this light really, really is special. So this first setup is going to be a simple kind of product shoot, if you will, and it's very straightforward. I have two MCs pointed at the wall and another aperture light, the tiny yet crazy bright ALMW as a little key light on this tiny SSD drive. With both the lights turned on and the Bluetooth reset, I opened up the Citus Link app on my phone and you're able to add the lights there, create groups and do all kinds of wild stuff. Once you open the app, you essentially have the same controls that you would by just physically changing switches on the light. But the app offers a lot more fine tuning capabilities, which is incredible and my favorite feature is the color picker so you can actually use the cameras on your phone to pick a color out and use that and feed that color information to your lights so we can grab the red off of the SSD and change the lights to match once you've picked a color and confirmed you can also fine-tune by changing the hue saturation and intensity and it just makes sense it's a really easy application to use and all the lights are perfectly consistent with each other and the color stats on these lights are amazing so pretty much anything coming out of this light is going to have a really really high CRI or SSI so you're not really gonna have any color issues at all with this whereas other lights I found that they're not quite accurate when it comes to RGB as well as the bicolor color temperature modes now normally I'm not a big fan of applications you got to install it on your phone now you got to remember to turn it on but the way it works with these lights is brilliant you don't have to connect to a Wi-Fi anything like that it just works over Bluetooth at worst I found you have to hit reconnect uh, when you've been gone for a long period of time but it really just works you don't have to pair the lights to each other it just works and that's really the big takeaway with this new system and application from aperture and a huge feature with this whole setup is that you can set your lights up walk away from them go sit in a director's chair go sit on camera like I do and start setting up your lights and see what it actually looks like you don't have to go back to the light tweak it go look at a monitor go back to the light and tweak it okay so the next setup is going to be a little more dramatic cinematic and I put the lights actually on the ceiling in my studio since I have drop ceilings which have metal crossbars I was able just to stick these lights on the ceiling and control them remotely so I don't have to get a ladder out every time I wanted to tweak the settings next I just went through and played around with colors adding some warmth to one side some cool to the other side to kind of mimic window light if you will and it's just so freeing not having to go to the lights And with one tap in the app I can link them up to have exactly the same color output or work with them independently and I'm super excited for future aperture lights because it's been so nice having an RGB bicolor light uh, that can do anything you can really point at anything pick up any color uh, it's just such a great experience and gives you so much flexibility now unfortunately the output is pretty bad on these when you compare it to other options on the market but for accent lights, for background lights like you saw earlier, these really are perfect. So at first I thought I would be more than satisfied with one or two of these. Now I'm thinking I'm gonna go out and buy a couple because of their versatility and how easy it is to control them remotely. Here's some stats when it comes to the built-in battery on this guy. For me, I thought the battery life was great considering what all I put this little sucker through. You can get two hours out of this sucker at full output, which is just great and really don't have any complaints when it comes to that. The complaints I do have is going to be the output of this light and the price now both of these you know aren't really problems depending on how you're going to use this but if you kind of want an all-around light this isn't going to be a great option for you you can't really use it as a key light if you're going to diffuse it uh, it's going to be more of a specialty light for little accents here and there hair lights um, all kinds of stuff like that what I showed you earlier I wouldn't really use this for lighting a person with a wider shot 
uh, that's where these other lights that are available from both Aperture and other companies are a good option if you're looking for output. So this isn't going to blow your mind when it comes to output for larger setups. The other issue is going to be the cost. This is $90 for this little light, and I think that's really fair considering what all it can do, but for half of that, you can pick up an M9 or just pick up two of them, or for just not too much more, you're able to get something much larger like the Aperture F7 or something like this, the Bowling P1. Uh, but again, mesh network using the app, that's what this is all about. So hopefully that helps you out if you're considering the new Aperture MC. I'll have more information in the description when it comes to this light. If you enjoyed this video, subscribing helps out. And I also have a bunch of camera guides over at the Academy if you're looking to learn more about your camera and how to shoot the best video quality possible on it. That's gonna do it for me, guys. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.